introduce yourself, please? Hello, I'm Carol Armitage. What uh, made you decide to use this music? Well, I'm using music by Bela Bartok. He is one of my favorite composers. And it's extraordinary music, not only because the musical ideas are very personal, and it's very classical, but there's something quite radical in his innovations, but it's also just penetrating psychological and existential music. So I find that particularly for a solo, which I'm doing, you need something that goes deep inside a person so that we can have a real experience of that person. I don't want to make just steps that are virtuoso, but I want to do something that's really about life. Can you tell us a, a little bit more about your work? Well, I was trained in ballet uh, until I was 17, danced with Balanchine, always Balanchine style. So my thinking conceptually is very much classical. It uses the poetry of movement to make meaning, very intimate relationship with music, but it doesn't look like ballet because I'm thinking about a different kind of geometry. Uh, I'm thinking not about Euclidean ge geometry, which is lines, vertical and horizontal, but the new kind of geometry that's called fractals, and that is the geometry of mountains and clouds and seashores. So it's, it's got all kinds of curves. So I'm thinking a lot about curving, so we make all kinds of new movement, but it still has the virtuosity, the refinement, um, and the poetry of, of traditional classical dance. Uh, can you tell us what inspired you to create this work? Well, you know, it was, of course, in my the Bolshoi's, just like a dream come true to work with these dancers who, of course, I've seen on stage and my entire life I've thought about these dancers. And they're just such extraordinarily well-trained, beautiful creatures. So I wanted to find something, again, that could use all their enormous talent and skill but also take them on a voyage into new territory to give them a very appetizing meal to digest so that they can learn new things. But to make it interesting, as I said, something that really is deep, not, not su superficial. Uh, have you worked with the Russian dancers before? I work with many Russian dancers, but usually they've been in the West. Um, I've choreographed with almost every ballet and opera company in Europe, and in these companies, there are quite a few Russians. Of course, I also made several ballets for Misha, or Barishnikov, and, you know, Nuriev invited me to do a piece at the Paris Opera. In fact, when I was making the ballet for Misha, every day, Misha, me, and Rudy took class together. Now, that was intimidating. <laughs> Uh, how does this project, Reflections, further your own artistic goals? Well, it's, all, it, you know, this caliber of dancer, this kind of training, this, you know, I would say the Bolshoi, the people's backs, the way that they can use their back and just the technical virtuosity is, is unparalleled. So for me, I can try some things out that I've never tried before because these dancers can do different things. So for me, it's a great chance to try like really long balance on point, really extreme positions of the back. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, if you've been in Orange County before, can you tell us a little bit about your experience? How was uh, the, uh, your experience been like and how did you like the Orange County and the theater? Well, Orange County is a universe unto itself, I think it's true. People always say California is so different. Um, well, I have been in Orange County before, but I've never worked at the Orange County Center for Performing Arts, which is extraordinary. I mean, these studios are wonderful. The stage is fabulous. The staff is so nice. And, you know, they have been incredibly welcoming and giving us this very unique opportunity. It's very rare that people take the risk to do all new work, to, to, and that is the most exciting thing because it's pure creativity. So I'm incredibly excited to be here. 
And I love, you know, that there are lots of Mexicans and lots of Vietnamese, and you, know, you have all these different cultures mixing together, which I think is, is well, it's certainly delicious food that is, you can eat. And then you just have a great atmosphere, all the different kinds of people mixing together. So it's quite a creative place. Uh, what would memory from your uh, childhood comes back and haunt you even today? Well, you know, I grew up in the mountains in Colorado in a very remote place surrounded by nature. We had to drive two hours to get groceries. I mean, very, very remote. No noise. I almost never saw money. I mean, a very, in a way, a very strange childhood. Uh, it was a scientific community, so very brilliant people. The first physicist from the U.S. to go to Russia worked there to do nuclear disarmament. So I was surrounded by great intellectual environment. But I think for me, nature is incredibly important. And I think the music of Bartok is very influenced by nature. And I think this is one of the reasons that I love it so much. So I'm haunted by nature. <laughs> Another question about your uh, childhood as well. What memory from your childhood gives you a sense of harmony, peace? Well, everything for me goes, again, it goes back to nature. I, you know, I think having our ego in the right relationship to the world is very important, that we see that we are small and the universe is big and we need to live in harmony. I mean, I'm very concerned by global warming. I think we all need to change our habits and to be very serious about, we want our beautiful paradise of Earth to survive. We want to see all these beautiful flowers and animals. So I, I think you know the concern with harmony is very important today. What do you value most in life? Well, I'm a very curious person. I like to have confront new ideas and new challenges. I'm, I and learn new things. Um, so I believe, you know, the secret. One of the great secrets to to a good life is having many things in balance, as we're saying, harmony. You know, your work and love and uh, your passions. But I also think keeping curious and being interested in things, all different kinds of things. And that's why I love being here working with new dancers, working in a new way. They have a different culture that makes me learn new things. I, this is invaluable. Who are your heroes in art? Maybe music oh. or fashion? Oh, I have so many. Um, so many. You know, fa let's just start with fashion. Fashion has had such incredible creative geniuses. I mean, in the 20th century, it's incredible. From, I mean, just in recent time, if we, you know, Gautier with his innovation of the classic, how he has turned that and deconstructed and made it new, and Lacroix with his sense of pattern. You know, I probably love the Italians most of all because I like the sobriety plus innovation. I think it's deeply classical, but it's twisted to something new. I think Miuccia Prada really did invent a modern woman in her early days of, of great thinking about fashion. Uh, you know, in art, because I work a lot with contemporary artists, I have many heroes. Uh, Bryce Martin, who's a great painter, Philip Taff, uh, Jeff Koons, a great thinker about contemporary culture, David Sally, these are all people I've worked with. So. There, again, I have many years. I love, you know, Jackson Pollock. I mean, going back a little further, and again, music.